In this video, we learn five concepts in Python that are often used in practice. Additional types, object-oriented programming, function parameters, variable scope, and various copying routines. Let's start with types. Python has some advanced types beyond integers, real values, and strings. Like almost all programming languages, Python supports Boolean logic, so a variable can be true or false, like in this example. But Python also supports other variable types out of the box, for example complex numbers. We first initialize a complex number C. For the imaginary part of a number, math usually uses the letter I. Note that Python uses J instead of I, which follows the electrical engineering convention. Here we subtract the real part of the number, so that we are just left with the imaginary part. In Python, we can check the type of a variable by using the keyword type. The type of variable cc is indeed complex. Python also supports so-called tuples. A tuple is essentially a list, but with round brackets. In Python, a programmer can easily change a list, for instance delete an element in the middle of the list. Tuples however are immutable. Because of this, a tuple can be a key in a dictionary, whereas a list can only be a value. Here we see an example dictionary where the keys are a tuple and a complex number, and the values are a boolean and a list. We can easily convert between most types. In this example we turn a tuple into a string. Some types are automatically converted. For instance, if we add an integer and a real number, the result will automatically be a real number. Python also supports object-oriented programming. In other words, you can make your own types in Python. Here we define a class with the name person. Inside the class, we define two functions. The first function is the constructor of the class. The constructor starts with def and init. Note that init is encapsulated with double underscores. Python internal functions often have these double underscores. Any object-oriented function starts with the self-parameter, which is another Python keyword. The constructor function, init, has another parameter, name. Inside the constructor, we give the object its name. So self-name is an object variable. The second class function is called print, and it merely prints the string, my name is, followed by the name of the object. Now we can generate an object v, simply by calling the class name person, which then calls the constructor. We give this object the name, billy. And then we can call v's function print, and we get the expected result. Note that we didn't need to include the self parameter when calling these object oriented functions. Next up, function parameters. In the example, we define the plus function, which has two parameters separated by a comma. The second parameter, b, is followed by, equals 3. This means that the user can call this function with or without the second parameter. If only one parameter is given, then the function would assume that b equals 3. In other words, the default value of the second parameter is 3. So if we call plus with only a single parameter 5, the result is 8. If we specify a second parameter, then our function would use that, and compute 5 plus 7. Parameters can also be marked with a star, or a double star. Here we have a function, foo, which has it all. When we call foo with a bunch of parameters, the first parameter is stored in the variable with the name x. All other parameters would be stored in a tuple with the name y. Finally, the foo function allows parameters which can be named arbitrarily when calling the function. These parameters are then stored in a dictionary in the double starred parameter z. Finally, we also want to discuss two quirks of Python, which are often pitfalls for beginners. Since we just discussed function parameters, let's start with the scope of variables. In the first line, we set three variables all to the value 1. Like everything in Python, this looks clean and simple. Now we define a function foo, completely without parameters. Inside this function, we first have a mystery line using the keyword global. We then assign the value 2 to both variables x and y. Then we print all three variables. When we call the function foo, the values of x, y, and z are being printed, and not surprisingly x and y are both 2, while z was unchanged and is still 1. However, if we then print the three variables again, something changed. Why is that? The reason is the scope of variables. When setting the variables to 2 inside the function, we only set the variables inside the function. 
If the function terminates after the print statement, the variables are set back to the value they had before calling the function. So the variable y is set back to 1. However, variable x keeps the value 2 from inside the function. This is due to the keyword global in the first line of function foo. The keyword global makes sure that anything that happens to x inside the function happens to x on a global level, also outside the function. Probably the main Python pitfall is about variable assignments, and what they mean exactly. If we write x equals y in Python, then a new variable x is allocated, and x copies the content of y. This works as expected if y was a simple variable type, like an integer or a string. But what if the variable was a more complicated data structure? Here is an example. The variable a is initialized with a list. The list has two elements, element 0 is just the value 1, but element 1 is a little list itself. This is perfectly correct in Python, as different elements of a list can have different types. Now we copy the list three times. First, we just use an assignment. Then we use the copy keyword. And finally we use the deep copy keyword, which is so special that we first need to import the copy library to do that. The three copies are stored in the variables b, c, and d. Now we change the value of 3 in the inner list of a into the letter x. And we also change item 0 in variable b to z. And now we print the four variables. As you can see, the variables a and b have exactly the same content. Both variables incorporated both changes because the assignment did not really copy the list a at all. Instead the variable b just points to the same list as a. So any change to a or b applies to both variables as they merely point to the same list. The copy function is a bit more complicated. If we apply the copy instruction to a list, we really get a new copy of the list. However, lists inside lists are not affected, there again we just keep the pointer to the list but not the actual list. So the edit to position 0 did not affect the variable c since it made a copy of that value. But the edit inside the inner list does affect C, because that list was merely stored by a pointer inside C. If we want to make a full recursive copy of a complicated data structure that has lists inside lists, then we need the deep copy command. This is why the variable D was unaffected by both changes. Thanks for watching this video.